Hello everyone and welcome as always to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we continue on with our Let's Play of Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. Now this is episode number 18. We are in the Allied setup phase, but we're in the home stretch. We can see the finish line. We're only a couple more episodes to go. Uh, as part of that, we are in the P's. We're going alphabetical, and we are in Don't Call Me Big Papa New Guinea. Uh, we are setting up Allied forces out here. The big, big base, of course, is Port Moresby. I say it's big, relatively speaking. It's uh, the big base on Papa and it's a very important base. There's a lot of things that go in and out of Papa or of excuse me, Port Moresby. Um, and you can see why. If we look at the big strategic map, there we go. Um, it's we talked about Rabul last time, and Rabul is right here, and Port Moresby is just on the other side of Papa here. And Oh, I think actually that's, it's that, it's that right there. Okay. Um, if you just look at this in the big, you know, 40,000 foot view, the Japanese, of course, we always talk about this, will be coming down the Philippines. They'll be coming down the Malay Peninsula. They will be getting over here into the Dutch East Indies. But if you look right at the start, you've got Rabul and you've got then Port Moresby, that could come under attack almost immediately. Now, Port Moresby is a little more removed than Rabul. It's very hard for the Japanese to initially get pressure on Port Moresby. Uh, many times that will happen after they get through the Philippines. They get into these Dutch East Indies islands, and then you know they can start to pressure this way maybe. Or once they take Rabul, they can get on the land here in Papa and start coming down. So, okay, you say, well, uh, all right, the Japanese are coming our way. I get it. Well, why is Port Moresby worth defending with a lot of assets? And it's really because if the Japanese get this base here at Port Moresby, northern Australia, this whole area, and maybe most importantly, this strait becomes impassable for a lot of your shipping, ships. Uh, you cannot get things out that you may need to get out that are retreating. So if Moresby falls, you can't get things up here to uh, you know, potentially reinforce, resupply. Darwin is sort of left out here on its own a little bit. If Moresby gets taken, and you know these Dutch East Indies islands get taken, all of a sudden Darwin starts to seem very isolated up here and as, you know, very isolated from the true population zones of Australia, which you know are Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane down here on the south and southeastern side. And so you wanna keep this sea lane open because Darwin is really the launching pad for the Allies out of Northern Australia. And you don't want that cut off from the rest of Australia. Uh, you know, it would still have Perth, but as we've talked about before, from Darwin all the way around to Perth, there's just not much. There's not much there. You've got, you know, Port Hedley and a couple of other very small places. Uh, but, you know, from Darwin to Perth is not much. So if Darwin uh, you know, gets cut off from the rest of Australia, it's not good. <laughs> I was trying to think of some word that was going to sum up it's not good, but I'll just say it's not good. It is a base that you want to defend as much as you possibly can, given the assets, What you know, whatever else is going on in the game. It is a base. I... I, I always try to refrain from saying you defend to the death, you know, as if you're going to send every single Australian unit that you could possibly afford up here. Uh, that's probably not the case, but it is very important. Let's put it that way. So let's go look and see what's going on it, at this island, or, you know, at the bottom here of Papua New Guinea in the Papa portion. 
um, you have these units right up here. And you'll notice, you can see the indentation here. This is the only one we're moving. Now I have to say, um, sometimes when I've just played my own setup and not followed Cole's spreadsheet, I think about getting all of these units out and down to Moresby. Now they're not big units. So let's look at this one at WA. okay? It's a seven assault strength, you know? So it's the Sikoi uh, rifles here. It's a seven assault strength. It's just not, you know, it's not gonna do much at Port Moresby. What you're really doing by leaving, and let's go look at the other ones. Again, a seven, this is the decoy rifles. Uh, Bikoi, maybe? A koi, okay. These are the A koi's because I think the B koi's are over here somewhere, maybe in Rabu. Yep, there they are, the B koi's. Um, so, you know, these are sevens out here, right? They're they're not going to really do much, but they can stop a direct landing and an immediate takeover of a base. You know, if you leave a little bit of infantry at a base like this, then, you know, the Japanese can't just land and, gen I'm speaking generally here, just land immediately, take it over, and on they go, right? They've got to put up a little fight, may take a couple of turns, they may have to, you know, send one task force and say, oh, what you don't want, and the Japanese and the AI especially will do this, is they'll send out very small assault strength units to take bases all through the Dutch East Indies here, even to places like Tarakan. I've had this happen before, where they try to take Tarakan with like 20 assault strength. Um, you don't want to allow that, right? Because if you think about it as a Japanese player, the main advantage you has, have as the allied player is greater resources, eventually quite a few more troops, <clears throat> And so you don't want to give the Japanese who have more limited resources and limited numbers of troops opportunities to come take bases for no cost at all. So just a free base to take, right? And so I actually like that Cole does this and leaves these guys here. As I said in the past, sometimes I, I've marched them straight out of here and down to Port Moresby with the idea of thinking, well, I need to buff it up Port Moresby as much as possible. But it's well worth leaving these guys here if the Japanese send a very small basic task force down here that let's say has even 15 or 20 assault strength you know, as a defender, you have an advantage. And if they're going to be attacking into your hex, they, you know, kind of need a three to one, four to one assault odds on you. And so if you can just leave a token force at some of these bases, it makes their life much more difficult. They're just not walkovers, you know. Um, and so anyway, we're marching these guys over here to uh, Tarapo. So they're going to be on the coast uh, with the idea that, you know, if the Japanese are going to come land down here, they maybe come to Madang first or they land here at uh, fin, oh, fin Schaffen. Um, and then, you know, they would hit they would hit this base first or this base right on the coast if they landed down here. And um, so, you know, we're, we're just going to march these guys over here and leave these two here, hoping they can put up some kind of token resistance. Um, let's see. Really, Port Moresby's uh, the, the ball game here. Uh, it, you know, there's just not a whole lot else going on besides these three units. Uh, we are going to eventually, I'll just mention this, but it's, it's still part of New Guinea, obviously. And you can see what the difference is here. This is Dutch, Dutch New Guinea. Papa is uh, Australian, or, or controlled by the Australians. It's a it's an Australian colony, let's put it that way. Um, as you may remember, we are sending some things over here to Morocco, and so we will start trying to build up Morocco, uh, or Morocco, however that is uh, pronounced. We also have Horn Island out here. Now, Horn Island gets really interesting uh, because the Japanese will be sending subs down this way. I, wouldn't you, as the Japanese player? I mean, this looks like the perfect sub alley. Uh, and eventually, 
they will have some surface ships down this way. It's one reason we want to try to hold them off, you know, at places like Celebus and the Philippines as long as we can so that they can't just directly pressure us down here in our only south to north uh, sea lane up to Darwin. And so, you know, the Torres Strait here, Horn Island gets interesting. You do have some troops starting right off at the top. Uh, they're seven and nine. You know, I, they're not much, but they're something. Uh, and you also have some engineers out here. And so out here at Horn, we are going to be expanding the airfield and we're going to be building fortifications. Uh, you know, hopefully those fortifications build very quickly. Sometimes I'm even tempted to take off the airfield. So more of it's going into the fortifications because really you've got enough other places you could fly planes out of, you know, question whether Horn really needs to build up an airfield, um, especially if you're going to build up Moroc here and Moresby. So you would have two there, but if Moresby did fall, you know, now you're looking down to Cooktown, which starts to get into some range issues. So we are building up Horn. Now over to Moresby, uh, let's go take a peek at that. Now we have some planes out here. Um, and these planes, I'm going to have to tell you, this is a difference. So on the Cole spreadsheet, these planes are coming over for troop pickup in Rabul. I think we're taking that koi that I just showed you, the B koi out um, from Rabul and bringing them back to Moresby. Because we're playing the December 8th scenario, uh, for some reason on the first turn, that's just not available to us to pick up troops. It's not even giving that as an option. Uh, if your game is different, let me know, but I think it's because it's the December 8th. I think once we flip over to the next turn, we will be able to, you know, we need to make a note and next turn. Uh, so on my spreadsheet, what I do when that happens is I turn it red. I start to make my own spreadsheet and I also, you know, I'll do color coding. So if I move something and it's going to be static or it should be static the rest of the game, like, you know, let's say garrison units in India or um, certain things in the U.S. or Canada or whatever, I will start to, you know, give them a color, you know, whatever that is, make it orange or something that says, okay, these guys are static. And then you don't have to worry about looking at those units uh, because usually through the first five or 10 turns at least, and maybe all of December, I go back and go right straight down the spreadsheet again and go and look at every unit just to make sure it is where I want it to be or where quote unquote it should be. Uh, or as you've noticed, if you're following along on the spreadsheet, there are many times that there are follow on orders and you can give those your own color. Uh, and then of course you can sort that whole uh, row or not row column uh, by color if you want. And so give those things different colors as you go through the spreadsheet and through each turn, right? So maybe you want to make blue, hey, I need to do something with this next turn. So I've given it an order, but I want to, you know, give it a different order next turn, or it's a task force that's going to go auto disband next turn, you know, make that, I don't care, purple or whatever, magenta. And, uh, you know, start to get your spreadsheet lined up that way. And what you'll find is even though we've got, what, 4,500 or uh, nearly 5,000 different rows now, as time goes on, those will start to whittle down. I mean, you'll lose some units, unfortunately. You'll also have some, as I said, units that become static, even if they're not static per the game. They're static for the orders you give it. They're just not going to move in the game unless something crazy happens. Uh, you'll start to knock out more and more of those units. And, uh, you know, the game becomes a lot more manageable. Uh, you will also have to start adding your own rows. And what I, I, of course, I don't fill it out as much as Cole did. You know, bless his heart that he filled out all of that information for every unit. But I would do, do like the unit name and where, you know, the hex it's in, uh, that kind of thing. And then you can really get the game manageable. At some point, you'll be getting down to you've got 
you know, 1,500 or so things. And I know that that sounds like an incredible number, but once you start doing turns and you get used to where things are and what's happening, it will just become a lot more manageable. And uh, anyway, that's, I guess that's my tip of the day, if, if you will. So I have marked these as red, which on my spreadsheet anyway, means there are follow on orders that need to happen. Just like uh, how Cole has it originally in his, where you need to do something after you've done the original orders. I make these red. So I've made these red and said, we have got to go pick up these troops with these planes next turn and again the way you do that pick up troops then target will light up uh, you will pick on the base which in this case is Rabul and then the unit you want to get out of there will be right underneath it it's a very elegant system I think it's just you know I think it's I've never seen it done so well in a war game um, the only other thing here is uh, plane wise is the search that we're running out these guys have a real nice range, so we'll be able to hopefully see anything coming down from Truck. Truck is a staging base for the Japanese that they use to go multiple directions. Uh, we have got some submarines coming over here because it is very important to the Japanese, and they do run a lot of operations out of it. If you look down this way, uh, over here at least to the west, it's kind of one of their bigger games in town. So, you know, this is this is a pretty big hop. And so generally a Japanese player will try to build up truck quite a bit. It's closest to Rabul, really. And, uh, you know, pretty much closest to Moresby. And so we will be running some naval search out here just in case they get uh, moving towards Rabul. And really we're, we're overwatching Rabul here a little bit. Uh, we do have this plane down at Rabul. Okay, nice. Oh, so this goes out north, uh, morning and afternoon, and then we send this a little more to the east. It covers some of the same territory, uh, but this goes a little more east. So looking more through Port Moresby. Uh, oh yeah, we have the Adelaide out here. I didn't really give it you know, I just kept this HMAS. Sometimes for the surface ships, I'll name it like Surface Townsville. Sometimes I think it's, you know, cooler just to leave it like, you know, HMAS Adelaide. I don't know, you know. We know it's in Townsville, so what difference does it make? Uh, this is a light cruiser out here. You know, it's got some anti-aircraft. It's actually for a light cruiser. A lot of the light cruisers don't have anti-sub. Uh, they're a zero here, so a two. Nice. Okay. It's got some anti-aircraft, anti-sub. We'll take it, right? Go throw it into Townsville, which it needs all of that, of both of those things it can get. So that's helpful. We have the Sun Chaser, which is a tanker that we're sending up to Swerbaya. Um, and up there, you know, we'll have it pick up some fuel. It's pretty deep. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I say it's pretty. It, it's, it's your average tanker. It's 6650, 8812. So it's your average tanker. Um, we will be sending it to Swerbaya, pick up some uh, fuel, and probably run it down to Darwin with that 8800. 8800 isn't really going to do it for Perth, um, so we'll probably run that to Darwin. Then we have a uh, transport that we don't really have need for in Moresby. Uh, you know, in this, it, it, early on in the game as the Ally player, you've always got needs for transports, and you could make you know, a, an argument if you need to get these guys out of here. But uh, we're, we're hoping for the best. We're going to send this down to Townsville, pick up some more stuff and take it to Moresby. Um, and so uh, Townsville will be its home port. We rail a lot of Australian troops up to Townsville to take them places. And so you'll, you'll come to find we get a lot of transports here at Townsville. And that's, uh, let's see, tanker... Adelaide, pick up troops, naval search. Talk about the uh, units north of Moresby. We already did that. Uh, and so it's really on to the Philippines then. And when I say the Philippines, I'm talking about uh, the smaller islands here in between Luzon and Mindanao. It's, you know, these islands. And there are a few more significant bases 
as opposed to all, you know, obviously there's just a ton of bases here. Uh, but there are a few more significant ones. I don't want to call them significant because they're, you know, in no case very big. Uh, but Cebu is one of them. Ilio is one. And then uh, the other one I wrote down is Porta Princesa because Porta Princesa, you do some things out of that. And it actually can be, you know, you can pick either Jalo or Porta Princesa to be this sort of rallying base. Uh, out of the Philippines before you head things south, or to be a refueling station, or even at, if, you know, things get crazy, to send your subs there before you send them uh, further south. And so, pick one of the two. Um, you know, Cole picked Jalo, which uh, I think perfectly good choice, and there will be, we'll have one of these floating, uh, uh, floating plane tenders here where you know the planes can come and, and restock and so you know we could be flying more missions out of here honestly the japanese come on so fast that this feels like it doesn't last very long and you have to get everything south that you can um and so let's talk about cebu we have a uh that's not so oh there's cebu sorry um it always throws me off when like the name's way over here uh, but I should have known this was Cebu because there is the aircraft symbol. We do have some naval search capability here. Actually, we have 12, 12 planes here, which is not insignificant in the middle Philippine Islands for sure. Uh, so we're running a pretty wide search, you know, to get, in, to get what, 110 radius here. Pretty good. Um, and yeah. You know, I mean, we're just going to be looking for whatever we can find. It's quite often the Japanese will be bringing an invasion force here very quickly. Uh, they oftentimes like to come grab, uh, what is this, Tacloban. Uh, they like to grab this one or, you know, because it's kind of hard to get in here and then to Cebu. So they'll gra grab this one first. Anyway, Cebu is here. It's got some planes. It would be nice to be able to get these planes out of here. We'll see if we can do it eventually. Uh, for now, they're better off just running that naval search. Maybe we'll pick something off. We get a transport. If they don't run, what you're really trying to do there is you're hoping the Japanese are not running, you know, any long range cap or they don't have any, um, you know, carriers in the area, of course, you know, if, if the main Japanese task force comes back this way, those 12 planes aren't going to do jack. But if the Japanese player gets a little over his skis and comes in this way before they've really secured here, so they can't fly, you know, they can't fly cap over their uh, invasion forces, with these guys, you know, you could knock off a transport or two. Because if you think about it, they, what are they bringing? They're going to have anti-aircraft with a light carrier, or not a light carrier, well, maybe a light carrier, but a heavy cruiser, uh, a light cruiser. They may have some of those kind of planes, but those are more recon planes. There's not a good way for them to get planes down here unless they actually do bring in a light carrier. And you'll see them do that with their invasion forces, um, of course, because it's really the only way they can get air cover. Well, if they do that, two things. One is it's not as fearsome as a whole carrier task force. It's going to be a light carrier, maybe two, which becomes a bigger deal. But, you know, you may get lucky and get a torpedo in the water. Well, we don't have torpedoes. What am I talking about? We're operating with bombs. It'd be nice. Uh, a sub may get a torpedo in the water, but these planes may be able to pick off a high value ship. And that's really what it comes down to. That's why we're not immediately getting them out. This is one of those opportunities where if they just get a little lax with what they send with an invasion force here, you may be able to pick something off, which is always nice. So we've got those planes here at Cebu. We also have the light cruiser Boise. Okay, we're going to send Boise, first of all, to Jalo and tell the Boise to remain on station. So it's going to be sitting here, even though Bali Papan is its ultimate destination, it's going to be sitting here 
you know, kind of protecting some of this other stuff that's headed this way. Um, it gives us some anti-aircraft. What do we got here on the Boise? Uh, 282. So it's given us more, more than just a little. You know, 282 is... Uh, that's a nice little AA to throw out there at Jalo. Uh, no anti-sub, as we saw on the other light cruiser, uh, it, which would be helpful out here. But we'll have subs in the area. We have destroyers in the area. And hopefully they can you know, protect the Boise from any other submarine work uh, and give us some you know, nice AA. So if the Japanese do have a light cruiser out here, they're flying some overcap, uh, you know, these guys can, you know, maybe blow something out of the sky if it tries to come this way. We'll see. At Cebu, we have the base force, and we have this uh, 81st Pennsylvania. I Well, you know what? That's ridiculous. I'm not going to say that that's Pennsylvania. It's the Philippines unit. So this is a Philippines Army Infantry Division. Looked at PA. I was like, Pennsylvania? Um, no, it's a Philippines unit. This Filipino unit is something I wanted to talk about for a second. So we, early on, I talked about realism. I talked about historical accuracy. I talked about how the game tries to deal with that and making you buy out, giving you so many political points and saying, hey, we'll be flexible and let you play the game. So if you want to buy certain units out of their command, we're going to give you that opportunity, right? Where you don't have to just play dot by dot what happened in the Pacific theater. You can kind of come up with your own plans or your own ideas and whatnot. Units like this, that is not the case. These guys, even though they're 79 assault strength, you couldn't get them off the island if you tried. They can't be bought out of this command, uh, the USA FFE. Uh, you know, you could put them over here and try to put them on a transport. It wouldn't work. Um, they are going to be in the Philippines and, quote unquote, go down with the ship. Uh, they will be fighting the Japanese, you know, until they either surrender or be killed. I, I, you know, it's that simple. You are not going to be taking units like this off of the Philippines, which... If it was a different kind of game, you could get all sorts of gamey taking a lot of these Filipino units out of the Philippines, you know, and putting them at places like Tarakan and Bali Papan, where they would probably be, you know, better used, quite frankly. But the game is not, not that I would want to do that anyway, but the game is not going to allow you. Uh, this is here. It is going to be in the Philippines. There's, It's not going anywhere else. Uh, I would also like to bring up here that we are turning repair off, as you can see, for pretty much everything out here that's a, you know, a generic small R resource. So anything, you know, supplies, manpower, uh, light industry, resources, whatever the case may be. I said, what did I say? Supplies. Yeah, supplies do not not do not have an icon <laughs> like this. Light industry, resources, manpower, all of that stuff is being turned off for repair. So essentially we're seeding the fact that the Japanese will be taking these islands eventually um, and we might as well let them beat up on what is going to become their own equipment. And so, you know, let them bomb the heck out of it. And hopefully it has so much damage, they cannot then later use it. And so that's a uh, Cebu. Ilio. Oh, the Houston's over here at Ilio. So I did want to talk about Ilio for a second. Uh, you know, is that Ilio? You tell me. Is that a Loilo? Okay. Um, sure. We've got the Houston here. It again. I now see. I did rename this one, and this is what I. This is always my quandary. Do I rename it because I think it looks better if it just says, you know, USN Cruiser or something. Surface Jalo. This is also going Jalo to Bali Papan. Same idea. Exactly the same idea. And this is a CA, a heavy cruiser, and it is a 282. Now let's go back. Was I wrong? Was that, gosh, I hope I didn't just like talk your ear off about this being a light cruiser. Yeah, it is a light cruiser. Well, interesting. 
So that's got really nice anti-aircraft for a light cruiser because we come up here to our regular style cruiser and uh, you would suspect it may have more AA, but it does not. It also has 282. We could go down through the guns and I'm sure I would see why that is. They probably have the exact same guns to come out exactly to that score uh, or something very similar. Let's put it that way. Uh, but the Houston, you know, this starts bringing in, you've got 560 AA power here at Jalo. And so you can, you can take on some, some serious aircraft coming this way if they're going to try to bomb Jalo because we have other things going on here. Maybe we even park have to park some ships here for a minute. Uh, when I say ships, other sorts of ships other than surface combat ships, we will have some nice AA in the area. Ilio, um, you know, we've got this group. This is another Philippines unit. 117 assault strength so again they've got nice assault strength the biggest problem um with these units and what ends up happening is you just can't supply them after a little bit so once you know everything starts coming out of manila uh clark field now that is one thing i will point out to the extent you have things in here or ships that come out you know maybe have them do a flyby and drop off you know at a uh, Cebu or an Ilio, you know, drop off some supplies, drop off some fuel, because ultimately these guys just really run out of supply. There's no way to get any more supply into them. We're turning the repair off on anything that may potentially even create uh, supply. And so, you know, they're just going to run out. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Uh, Porta Princesa, uh, we have a little nav search running out of here. Again, this is one of these. It's on the back side here of Palawan. Uh, it's one of these places you could try to maybe set up a floating air base here and whatnot. Um, you know, right now, what do we have here? We have, oh, this is that support unit. As a matter of fact, I wanted to name this Jalo Support Jalo. So this is what's coming down as a tender to Jalo. Um, we're getting it out of Port of Princesa. This is why I said you kind of make the choice one or two. Uh, float plane, you've got these guys running some, you know, naval search this way, thinking if anything comes by this way. I think we already have this straight covered, so it's like, you know, let's get this one covered a little bit and see what happens. We also have one down here, I think. What are these guys doing? Oh, have we not? Oh, we haven't set this up yet, have we? North Borneo? Huh. Interesting. Well, for now, let's just do have, have them do a general search. Just for now. I'm going to go back and check the spreadsheet on that. That's kind of weird. Did we just decide? Hmm. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to go look at that one. Um, yeah, so Porta Princesa, we've got that, you know, looking over here in this strait, see if anything comes down. We've got, oh, whoops, yeah, we've got that, that's right. We've got that support, and we have a base force here. We're not doing anything with it. It's staying here. It's also USA FFE, so it is going to sit right here at Porta Princesa. Uh, that's really it for these middle Philippine islands. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, bases out here but there's not a lot of material out here really it's all at Cebu Ilio you've got this one unit okay um, that's over here at San Jose and we are marching them over to Iloilo uh, and we're gonna so we're gonna bring them over here mainly just because why not uh, you know I guess we could leave them here but they're all by themselves you know come over here with their comrades I guess uh, and then the other one is uh, Tacloban. I didn't really say much about this. You have two cargo ships that you're sending down to Tarakan from here. Uh, they're just, you know, your standard vanilla. Uh, we're sending them in two different batches, one and one here, because you just want to split them up so they're not together because they're these are guys are just a moving target. Uh, you, oh, you have a 34 unit here that's just going to sit here. Again, it's another unit you can't get out and we're turning off what we need to turn off. And really, that's the central Filipino islands. There's just not a whole lot 
happening there. Well, there will be a whole lot happening. There's just not a lot of material there. With that, let's go over to Canton, uh, which is in the Phoenix Islands. Uh, there we go. And this is Canton. Um, Oh, yeah, we've got that really interesting transport that's out, <laughs> out here. Excuse me for a second. Gra grab a drink. We've got this transport out here that's just hovering. It was already, you know, at Canton, just sort of hanging out. And um, we're... It's very interesting. There's a lot of orders. This is why you've got to keep up with that spreadsheet and get your own organization going on by colors or create your own spreadsheet or do whatever you have to do, write notes, because this is an interesting one, right? We've got this cruiser out here, the Pensacola. This is called Transport Luganville Now. It was not originally called Transport Luganville. Luganville. It was originally supposed to go to Suva, and Suva is here. All right. So we'll come, this is one of those times I wish I could use the max mouse wheel to just scoot back a bit. But uh, Suva is here, and all of this. So you've got uh, the 147th. The uh, this is a base force. The 115th. Another base force. The 114th. You've got the 131st. I believe the 131st. Well, we can just go look. It's field artillery, um, and then the 147th is an artillery regiment. Uh, and never forget that you can click on the ship, and you can see exactly what's on board. Just like on a carrier, you can see exactly what's on board uh, from an uh, airplane perspective or squadron perspective. Uh, this is, yeah, 114th Base Force. Right. Anyway, we could go through all that. Well, now I want to see what the one for. Yeah, it's an artillery regiment. So you've got a lot of these kind of support units, base forces, artillery regiments, uh, things such as that. They were originally going to Suva, all of them. Now we're taking them to Luganville. And Luganville, you know, let's look at it. Luganville is right here. Uh, Nomaya is here. If we go just a little further north, then you see Rabul and up to, you know, Truck, Ponape. Uh, you start to get up into Japanese territory. And oftentimes a good Japanese player will like to go to Rabul. And from Rabul, push down into Guadalcanal and then end up in Luganville. Luganville is another, you know, Luganville is actually a better spot probably for the Japanese to hit than Nomaya because most allied players are really going to beef Nomaya up. Uh, Luganville is a little tougher. It's just a little further away. You know, it's a little further away from Australia. It's kind of a bit north of our iron fence here. And so, you know, it's, it's whoop. And, and then down here, all the rest of these are kind of lined up along here. And so it's just a little different. Okay. It sticks out a little bit. And, but in Cole spreadsheet, and I like this, we are going to go beef it up, but we're not going to drop everything there. And unfortunately I didn't write down, which I just didn't do it yet. Well here. So some of these units are going to Nomaya. So even though they are on a transport ship, I don't think we've ever talked about this, even though they're on this transport, you can go find the ship that they're on, the transport ship, find them, click on them, still see their entire card, and set their future objective. So that's cool, right? You can do it while they're in transit. Um, so some of these are going to Nomaya, and some of them are going to Luganville. But as you saw, you know, we're bringing it here. We're going to stop it at Luganville. And right now we have do not unload. All right. And uh, wait a minute. I think I was supposed to change the home port here. I'll have to go back and do that as well. Sometimes I'm, I'm going through this, writing down notes, thinking about what I'm going to tell you guys. And I forgot, I forget, you know, how to play the game myself. Um, I don't believe this is supposed to go to Brisbane. I actually think it's either supposed to go to Nomaya as a home port, although I never leave transports with Nomaya as their home port. I would take it to Townsville probably, but I'll go look that up. 
Um, the point is, some of these are going to Luganville. We're going to bring this in, and we've told it not to unload. So what are we going to do? So this is Comac. So now we've got Comac, too. So we've got Luganville, Comac, Nomaya. What are we going to do? It's going to come in here, remain on station. So it's going to sit here. We're going to then split off the task force, depending on where things are going. Uh, we will not be sending a transfer into Comac, rather we will bring it into Nomaya and then just take it up this major highway. Um, I can't remember if we do that by strategic move or just have it march, but it'll be marching uh, or moving by the major highway if it can uh, up to Comac. And so these units are being splintered out across these very important bases. Now what do we have? Oh yeah, the, the Blomfontein. The Blomfontein has the 148th. If we click, click on that, it's an artillery battalion. It is actually staying in Canton. So it's this weird thing, but it can't unload all the troops right now uh, because it can't dock because of the port size. Um, we're just going to have it... We've got it at unload cargo. We've set the destination to Canton. So even though it's there, what it should do is, is anything else docked here? Uh, let's see why exactly it works out this way. Oh yeah, we're way over docked. I see. Well, let's, un we'll just undock these guys. It's as simple as that. We'll dock these guys. Um, right and then we'll just unload them back okay perfect now so this base force is going to stay here with these engineers now canton is in a really precarious situation um it's you know it, here's christmas and palmyra back behind it where we've set our our crescent our iron fence crescent um canton's kind of out here right it, it's not really protected by much. There's not a whole lot around it. I have played both ways. I played the Queen's Gambit with it, where I just allow it to fall uh, because, you know, kind of why not? It's not directly threatening something. Um, it could act as a staging base into Pago, into Christmas. I, and I get that. So, you know, no, no need to tell me all, of the, <laughs> all of the danger it could potentially bring, but out of the, all of the choices, sometimes I do not buff this up much because it's hard to resupply once the Japanese get, uh, ships down here. So, you know, Canton, we're not going to just let it fall. We're going to have a base force and some engineers here. I think we actually even send a, we've previously sent a unit from Pearl that will be coming down here. We could go look at all of our transports. I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, but, I, you know, I think we are protecting Canton. Uh, again, once the game gets started and we've played a couple of turns, things like that become a little more clear in your mind. Like, what is it exactly uh, is my game plan here. And I just can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but I do believe in this, in Cole's uh, setup, that Canton, we at least put up a token resistance uh, and maybe even a little more than a token resistance. But we'll, talk, we'll be talking quite a bit more about that. Um, those were the two transports out here. You know, there's both kind of interesting what we had to do, but we're dropping that base force right back off, even though we've loaded it up. And then, oh, I didn't say, this is going back to Pearl Harbor. Okay, we need transports back there. We have it going directly back, uh, really because, you know, hopefully the Japanese won't have a ton of sub out activity right down this way for its journey, but we'll see. Um, Pago Pago. All right, that just sounds fun. Uh, Pago Pago becomes one of your major daisy chain islands. Uh, we already have a decent little amount out here for what is not a large place. It is a 2-2 two -two and a 1-4. We are building everything. And Pago Pago, uh, Cole recognizes as well as you should that this is a major American base. When you start going west here, it is the last major American base until you get to Australia. 
And so, you know, the Americans have, uh, you know, Christmas and Palmyra out here. Then we round the corner and you've got Tahiti, the French base down here. And then you've got this American base, Pago Pago. Uh, you say, well, what about Tau or Tau? It's probably Tau. Uh, it's a one zero. You're not going to be doing anything with that. Now you do obviously it's the allies right you do make some use of savi obviously suva is really between pearl harbor and australia suva is probably your most well i don't want to say most important but you're really going to be building suva up out here uh, but pago as well it's one of the daisy chains and um, right now we have some asw going here with the am uh, the kingfisher which is only a one, but as you may remember, we're sending destroyers down here, American destroyers. I think they're only twos. It's not like they're, you know, going to change the world with their ASW out here, but it's something. Um, it starts, you know, it doesn't have much out here, but we will be pumping this full of supply and fuel. Uh, we have a base force. I mentioned we've got this uh, marine defense battalion out here it's an artillery unit it's a nice little 23 it's got some big guns big artillery out here and then we've got uh the samoan marine battalion okay um 18 assault strength you know not gonna change the world it's static these are uh i would imagine these were made up of samoans this unit was and so they are going to be defending their home islands here uh, so pago pago for all of its importance later on there's not a ton here now there will be and there will be very shortly um why did i put santa cruz island uh, oh there's a task force over here okay and this task force is also very interesting there they are um santa cruz islands right there's no actually established base here yet although oh, the game does give you the option of building a base on every one of these little uh islands sticking their nose up out of the ocean uh, but the real interesting thing is not what's on the islands themselves but what is you know sailing by it and that is this group of ships that we have now busted out into three task forces because they were just headed this way. Who knows? I don't know the history behind why this task force would have been out here at Santa Cruz. Uh, you have a cruiser, the Louisville. Um, let's just change this to, uh, to why. There's nothing. I just don't want transports in there to get me confused. We'll just say the U.N.S. Louisville or Louisville. Uh, I know it's not Louisville, but I, I used to have a friend from Louisville who told me, would always tell me stories about how Louisville had the best of everything. And uh, we would make fun of him by calling it Louisville as if we'd never heard of it. You know, oh, you're from Louisville. OK, uh, that aside, the cruiser Louisville is going to be heading into Townsville. This is what I was talking about. A lot of these American cruisers, light cruisers that you may have over here, send them to Townsville or up and down that little area there, Bundaberg, I think we have one, where we get some anti-aircraft over there. Uh, AA-282, again, seems like a standard setup. Um, and then we have these two transports. Okay, we're going to save our guys. And I'm glad we're doing it. You know, in, in the grand scheme of things, I know it's a game and the, these are just little pixels out here, but they are our guys. And so we're going to go save this Australian unit. It's a, it's 102 men out here on Nauru Island, uh, but it is they are our guys. And we are going to send a transport, whether it be foolish or not. Now let's look at the victory i say all of that let's look at the victory value of the ship my goodness cole it's a 20. now i do not normally go get these guys i have to admit um oh boy you're playing with fire you know uh, again uh, what's the president coolidge holy smoke in heaven 
<laughs> okay, we're not going to get our guys. I'm going to send these guys to Townsville. Um, sorry, Australian Base Force guys. I Well, I'll tell you, well, shoot. It just, it pains me. Um, we're going to send these to Townsville for now. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I got you all worked up. I made it sound like we were going to be so heroic. And then I change my mind and leave them stranded out there. I get it. They're a base force. You can use them for, well, now that I've done all that, hold on. And I am going to do waypoints with these so I don't just sail them straight that way. Hold on. How many engineers? <sighs> to it, it's just not worth two engineers to lose a, potentially. And I know that there's not. It's not a great chance that we would lose these. Maybe not even a, a good chance. Um, but I'm just not going to take the chance for something that doesn't really matter. So we'll set up a waypoint here for each one of these. Sorry, guys. Uh, boy, I bet you their commander hated getting that call. Uh, actually, the transports are now heading south. Yeah, we're just going to get them out of there. Um Oh, shoot. You know what I could do? Let's just do this. Let's just put them all back together. Let's put it back together with that cruiser. That makes a heck of a lot more sense since it has AA. Now we just run it down and around and up to Townsville. Okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry for that buildup and sorry to the Australian base forces that I am leaving stranded out here. Well, let's talk about these islands for a minute. Ocean Island. You know, it's, uh, yeah, Australian unit, they're engineers, you know, they, they, it's not worthless, I get that, but, you know, a, a 34 transport ships, when you don't have transport ships to even take that chance, just on the off chance that they send a submarine down here, that, I, you know, I don't think they can get any kind of air cover here, and they most likely, you know, most of their equipment from uh, an air perspective, I'm talking about ships that carry planes, is over by Pearl Harbor at this point. But they do have some light cruisers that are out here somewhere. I mean, we're just not that far. It, it would take, I can't remember exact, okay, it's just one now. They move at like one, two, three, four, a pulse one day. So it's gonna take about, it'll be the second day before they would get into the port who knows? I mean, these these ports. It's a port. Well, it's better than I thought. It's a port two, a port two. It's going to just take them a little bit to load up. Probably another day. Now you're getting into three or four days. Eh, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> so do as you wish if you want to strictly follow the spreadsheet. Uh, I certainly understand that. Call knows more about this game than probably anyone on the planet or close to it. Uh, there are a couple of our commenters here that, that may give him a run for his money. Uh, but that being said, I just don't even want to take the chance for, for those two forces. Um, in real life, maybe my kind heart would make a different decision. Now that leads me to something else. I was going to do this at the end of last episode, but I, instead I'm going to do it now. And that brings me to uh, one of our great commenters that add a little bit to every episode, it seems. Uh, Bay Bayard is just a wonderful commenter. I always want to thank him uh, for his comments because he knows this game, obviously, inside and out and uh, always add some good information. So you should go read those. Uh, but one thing he mentioned was, you know, our idea here, it's not the Diné. Oh, we still have them in port. That's right. The Repulse and the Prince of Wales. We have these two just, you know, these guys have targets, bullseyes and everything else, red sirens on them here at Singapore at 202 points each. And the question came up during the Singapore, the Malay episode, when do we try to get those, those ships out? Those ships are going to come south as fast as we can get them out. I'm going to run them at full speed whenever we decide to do it, at least momentarily, to get them out of that harm's way. And then they're coming over here to Cape Town, if I can find there. Oh, I should always look at the mini-map. Uh, to Cape Town to get repaired 
if they get hit by anything, but really just to save 400 victory points. Um, and so made the comment that, you know, first turn might be the best time to get them out. And I get that argument because, you know, with every turn, the Japanese are going to be pushing south. I'm not sure exactly, you know, I could look at our detection level here. Let's float over Singapore. And can we, yeah, it says they have a one and one detection on us. Kind of throw that out the window. We've talked about this first turn. We don't really know what the true detection levels are. Uh, but if they don't have great detection level on us, they may be a little scared to run a major, you know, major bombing runs over Singapore right at the top here because they don't really know what we have. And we, we have, you know, we're going to have quite a bit up in the air running cap. And so the idea, I guess, to, to cut to the point is get these out as soon as possible. And so, you know, I've been kind of going back and forth about it. Um, I know that if you watch some other uh, people, I think the historical gamer in his match um, with XTRG, which I really enjoyed watching. I was really sad that they stopped doing that. Uh, in his match, it became this whole big thing about the repulse and the Prince of Wales trying to get out of here. Uh, but I think I do like the idea of, of just busting, busting butt out of here. Uh, we may want to send something Oh, we have this, these really nice destroyers here that have great ASW too. These are nice ships. Let's try to get them out. So we've got some ASW. Huh. Wow. We've got some really... These guys, I know that we're sending them over to Palembang. Um, and these guys were running ASW off Singapore. I guess I didn't realize... The Electra and the Express were so, such nice ASW. We may want to, well, let's put all of them, including the Vampire, in here. And we're just going to, we're going to call this Haul and Ass. Um, no, I won't call it that. It would be a great name for a task force, though. Um, yeah, okay. Surf <laughs> I'm gonna, now I'm going to name it something really boring. Surface. Where do I want to take them, though? I guess I'm going to say Cape Town for now. If we get completely out of here, we may float them down to Darwin. But I'm going to try to take them through the strait. So let's get them out of here and over to Cape Town. We'll say that now. Does that make sense? Well, we're going to do that. We'll be watching them every turn. As soon as they get through the strait, I'll probably actually take them up to Colombo, especially if they don't need repair. Um, if they don't need repair, there's no reason to take them all the way to Cape Town. I do realize that before someone says, you fool, why are you taking them to Cape Town? Oh, shoot. Well, <laughs> we're going to need a waypoint. We're certainly not floating them out that way. Um, wow. Okay. That's funny. Uh, let's set our waypoint one. You get to see how the meatloaf is made here. Uh, and we're going to do this direct... Uh, actually, if I'm going to do it direct, that's not the best. Let's do it straight to here, actually. Uh, says it doesn't. Oh, because it's got the home port at Singapore. All right. Well, we'll change that in a second. Uh, let's do this direct. How does that change our routing? Nope. Let's do it maybe coastal. Uh, let's try Let's try that. What does coastal look like? Well, I like this coastal. I don't <laughs> I don't like this coastal. Okay, well, we'll do a coastal and we'll set a second waypoint. Um, okay, so it's going to go coastal to here and then we'll set our other waypoint out here by the Cocos. And let's see how that looks. All right. I, I like, you know, either direct or coastal when you're trying to do this. And I also like it going through this straight because I find that, uh, you know, Japanese submarines operate more right in here and not as much in this, in that. I don't even, 
that's a curious question. I'm not sure I've ever seen a Japanese submarine in here, but I, I assume they can operate. If we can get a battleship through here, they can operate a submarine. You just don't often see it. Uh, okay, I like that routing. Okay, that's nice. You got to see how it's all done there. We are not going to take it all the way back to... Well, what we'll do is we'll bring it out here, essentially have it stop the cocoa. Well, you know what? Then why don't we just make... Why don't we just make our destiny? Oh, shit. Now I got to set that all up again, don't I? Oh, no. I hope not. Ah, cool. Let's take them to the Cocos and let's leave them remain on stage. Again, we're going to be looking at them at every turn, but let's have them remain on station with a home port of Darwin. Or do we want to make that Colombo? Well, again, we'll decide that in another... I'm not going to have you hear my hamster run on the wheel uh, trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do here. I would probably maybe prefer to take these up to Colombo, but that's a decision for another day. And with that, <laughs> with that decision making, I think we've hit the end of this episode. It's been a really fun one. Now, tentatively... I'm thinking I will be done with the setup next episode. I think we can get through the rest of the stuff. We have Sumatra and we have a few other things, but I think if I talk really fast, we can get through it in an hour and we will be ready to go to turn one. I have not yet decided the night that I'll do that. Uh, I will give you notice, plenty of notice if you want to join me. I do think I'm going to do it on Twitch uh, just because... Heck, I wouldn't mind building up the Twitch a little bit and having a place we can all go for an important turn or something. You know, the majority of this channel is going to be on the YouTube, uh, you know, pre-recorded. Um, but oftentimes there might be, I say often, I just said not oftentimes, maybe once a week or something like that. It might be nice to jump over to Twitch, watch a turn or, you know, some other games that we play on the channel. It might be fun, especially something that's a little more real-time strategy or something like that. It might be fun to do that on Twitch. And so, you know, go ahead. I've got Twitch on my front page. Go ahead and click on that and just subscribe to it. I, I don't have anything up there now other than, you know, like the logo and the name. I just haven't built it out yet. Uh, but this will be a good excuse for me to do that. So, you know, if, if you want, go over there and subscribe. And I'll probably do it maybe on Tuesday night, uh, but I'll let you know, I think, tomorrow when I drop the 19th episode. Um, I say Tuesday night. You may be watching this months from now. What is this? This is Ju January. I almost said June. This is January 8th. Um, so I guess that would be 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. I'm thinking about doing that on the 12th on Tuesday night. It would probably be at 5 Pacific time, which is my time, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, uh, 6 Mountain time. And so, you know, that could be a lot of fun. If we could all watch it together, maybe do a little chat while we're doing it. You can hear me uh, exclaim, as, as things get blown out of the water. But anyway, as always, this is Strategy Gaming Dojo. I really enjoyed it. I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, hey, give me a subscribe. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Feedback. I love it. Uh, we can talk through anything maybe you didn't understand or if you just have any question. If you have a question about life, no. But, uh, you know, always feel free to leave a comment. And if you want to head over uh, to Twitch. As I said, I have a link right up at the top on the front page of the YouTube channel. Uh, go over there and maybe we'll do something over there this week. I'll let you know. All right. As always, thank you so much. Talk to you next time.